Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, happy Monday. Hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and do some updates on the Diddy situation. So if you guys do not know, Cat Williams went viral once again this weekend because folks were secretly recording his comedy show. And during his comedy show, he was basically taught my Diddy's lawyer, how he's a trash lawyer. Like I've been saying, this guy had to have come from Timu because it seems like the lawyer is out here wanting attention and he keeps trying to spin this baby oil story almost as a way for him to garner attention. Here goes some videos. I can't imagine it's thousands. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not really sure what the baby oil has to do with anything. I don't know where the number a thousand came. Baby oil, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. He has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Diddy's case causing online chatter over the shocking discovery. The rapper's attorney telling all to TMZ as the outlet dives deep into the ongoing trial in their documentary, The Downfall of Diddy, The Indictment, streaming on Tubi. They're essentially saying it's a lubricant for an orgy. I guess, I, I don't know what you need a thousand, I, one bottle of baby oil goes a long way. I don't know what you need, need a thousand for. Yeah, it's the number of bottles going viral on social media, with Diddy's longtime nemesis, 50 Cent, dropping this meme on X. Meanwhile, Diddy's defense team offers this explanation. I mean, he has a big house, he buys in bulk. You know, I think they have Costco's in every place where he has a home. I mean, have you sat in a, in a parking lot of a Costco and see what people walk out of there with? TMZ reached out to Costco. Their rep says none of their US locations carry baby oil. He believes he's innocent, I believe he's innocent, and we're gonna fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. We're not giving up by a long shot. I told Mr. Combs um, I'm gonna try and get his case to trial as quickly as possible. I don't think it was a thousand. Let's just say it's a lot, okay? How do you explain the baby oil and the lubricants? A thousand bottles of baby oil. Uh, I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there's a Costco right down the street. You know, I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. Um, and, you know, this is this is consensual adults doing what consensual adults do. You know, we, we can't get so puritanical in this country to think that somehow sex is a bad thing because if it was, there'd be no more. All right, so you guys just saw the lawyer talking about it. So much so that Costco had to later on come out and say that they don't even sell baby oil at Costco. Now Costco is addressing Agnifilo's claim, telling TMZ that none of the company's U.S. locations carry baby oil. Well, Cat Williams is definitely joking about the situation and going in on Diddy, going in on his lawyer, and going in on the baby oil. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. We be having a real conversation. About some real shit. It ain't that much ass shit in the world. Everybody know that. P. Diddy's dumbass lawyer said, You probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Costco hit right back. We don't even sell, baby. Oh. So you guys just saw what Cat Williams had to say. Now, what's very interesting is that Cat Williams made reference 
to drugs being put in the baby oil. And a lot of people are thinking that, you know, Cat Williams knows something that we all don't know. But people have been running this um, conspiracy on TikTok now for about a week. I know a lot of people have been asking me, is it really baby oil? It could be GHB. And what's interesting with that conspiracy is that a lot of people on TikTok were saying this before Cat Williams ever said this. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys some of these videos of people thinking that that's really GHB instead of baby oil just because of the large quantity of oil. So I want you guys to go ahead and check that out. And y'all may have already seen it, but I had to bring it to my people. Puff Daddy did not have just a thousand bottles of baby oil. The baby oil was laced with GHB, a liquid ecstasy. Performance drug, stamina, all that. And what they would do, I guess, was splatter the baby oil on you. I don't know how to. It's not baby oil. It's GHB. Who has a thousand bottles of baby oil? If baby oil was such a big part of all these parties and all the things that Diddy did to his victims, some celebrities would have made a joke about it here and there. We would have heard about it. Especially Chrissy Teigen couldn't be paid to shut her mouth. That bitch would have cracked a joke about it, for sure. I just watched this man's TikTok about how it's not a baby oil, it has to be laced with drugs. So as I'm reading the comments, someone said, that's why Jaguar Wright said in one of her interviews at the end, she said, Blink Twice. Blink Twice was a movie with Channing Tatum, he would spray perfume onto women who would make them forget everything. So then somebody else in the comments said, yeah, and GHB is slippery. So I look up, the, what is it called on the street? Look at the last one, liquid ecstasy. Side effects that include seizures and comas. It was taken off the shelves or something in like the 60s. What is GHB used for in bodybuilding? Performance enhancement additive. What are the positive side effects of GHB? Feelings of euphoria. What is GHB for parents? Usually available as a clear liquid. It's not baby oil. It just makes sense because why would the feds confiscate fucking baby oil? And how do you get so many people to comply besides money? You drug them. Being saying that, of course the the baby oil was J G H B. Nobody needs that much baby oil. Who needs that much baby oil? Like how much thousands of bottles? It was obvious to me. It was, I mean, I was going to say that before, and that made sense to me. The drug. Everything is about mm -hmm. nobody needs that much baby oil. And who uses baby oil? They have li coconut oil is better than baby oil. Baby oil is just gonna like no. Anyway, I mean you can tan in baby oil, but that gave everyone <laughs> cancer. All right, so you guys just saw what folks on TikTok were saying. So this entire situation is crazy, but Cat Williams is right. You know, something's not clean with this whole situation. And his attorney definitely feels like he's here for attention and not really to get Diddy off of anything. Now, in other Diddy news, what else is going on is we all know that these Diddy freak tapes, people have been talking about this. This and you know, uh, recently a male sex worker gave one of them freak off tapes to the feds. Well, now a woman named Ariel Mitchell Kidd, she's representing a woman who claims that Diddy aired her in 2018. And so she went on to News Nation's show this past Friday to discuss what the woman endured. And also there's a potential sale of the sex tape. So they've been saying that these tapes have been leaking and being shopped around Hollywood. And I remember Jaguar Wright saying something like this a few weeks ago and people thought she was crazy. She was saying that a lot of these tapes were ending up on the dark web. And remember the guy, Joe, who was also accused of aring that other lady that came out with Gloria Allred, he ran a whole porn company. He filmed porn, he distributed porn. So this might be why Diddy had Joe on the payroll, not only to be his little side rapist, but to also film this and produce it. Because as we know, a lot of things end up on the dark web, everything from snuff to child porn, you know, all types of just deviant, demonic stuff. So I would not be surprised at all if this tape is being shopped around. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch some of this interview right here. I also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to 
essentially represent them in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. So, um, which I declined that because... Uh, Wait a that, minute, say that again. Say that again, back up. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, there have been people already shopping. We've heard about the tapes, but yes. was, the, the shopping thing is... Yes, new. there already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Uh, I've heard this before, so like a catch and kill. Catch and kill, correct. Wow, can you, and I guess you can't reveal the person who is on No, I can't game. explain who the person was, but Mr. High profile? Combs, Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is, I would venture to say, more high profile than Mr. Combs. Really? Really? And you've seen it? Or I've seen stills of the video. Okay. Um, I so you can verify that, I, I, that it exists, that it's real, that the other person in the video is very visible. It's no question if it's that person in the video. And I can tell the video was pornographic in nature. Oh my, all right. So we know that he videotaped a lot of activities at his home, did he? Um, and it sounds like there was probably a lot of hidden cameras as well. Is that what is being talked about? Yes, um, this was actually in his Atlanta home, at okay. a home he had in Atlanta at one point. And um, it does seem that it's, the person isn't like looking into the video. So it's, to me, doesn't seem like that person knows they're being videotaped. It doesn't seem like they're active participant in the videotaping, like they're being surreptitiously recorded. It. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, the police report we talked about. But when your client came out, uh, obviously the neighbor knew. Did she talk to her family? Did she talk to her friends? Did she have another lawyer? Let's go back to your client. So at the time, she, as most rape victims are, they feel a lot of shame. Absolutely. And they, they don't want to vocalize what happened to them because then it makes it real. So they kind of just kind of internalize it and get over it. Mm -hmm. And due to the high profile nature that it was Mr. Combs who did this, she was afraid for her life. She was concerned that if she was to come forward and say something that no one would believe her because we're talking about 2018 when Mr. Combs was still pretty much at the height of his career, still very much so a icon and influential figure. Mm -hmm. So she's just a young girl from Northern California who's gonna believe that he right. had done something to her like this. So she didn't tell anybody, she did not hire an attorney. All she did was uh, make the police report in the hopes that maybe the police would try to investigate and come up with anything. But she said she kind of felt from the police that they were disregarding what she was saying, even without saying Mr. Combs' name. So she didn't feel any confidence that revealing his name would have done anything. Sure, sure. I mean, but there's a police report. Yeah. I mean, that fact in of itself is a big deal because when you're talking about going back in time and talking about these allegations from other alleged victims, you know, there's not a lot of police reports, but you guys actually have one. And is that going to be revealed? Are we going to be able to see it? Yes. As soon as uh, I file my lawsuit in civil court, I will be attaching the criminal complaint that was made. I'll attach the number so everyone can see that this is a real number and can go to the police department there and request their own copy of that police report that was made back in 2018. Well, that's gonna be a huge deal when it happens, obviously, so we wanna follow up on that. Um, did Mr. Combs have any reaction? Do you know if he was interviewed? I mean, he was named in the police report? Um, I don't think so. Um, based on what she said, she really felt that the police were trying to bury this and disregard her claims mm -hmm. and not really investigate, which is another reason why a lot of victims don't report these things to the police. We have to address the elephant in the room is that we have victims, especially women, who go to the police, who are typically men, who don't actually investigate these things. They victim blame, they victim shame, and women don't feel safe or even protected to even make these claims because they don't think they'll be taken seriously, nor will they cl their claims be investigated. Right. Well, your client should be proud of herself for filing that claim and making that call and going to, for help uh, because that's a huge deal. And of course, these are allegations. We want to say that. What was it like for you uh, when you got this phone call, when you realized what you were going to be stepping into? Um, I when after talking to her, I just wanted to protect her. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to help her. She seemed as somebody very broken by this experience. And it was very concerning for me to hear her 
saying these things and expressing this very deep trauma associated with what happened to her. I just wanted to make sure that, number one, she was heard and we can get her voice to the masses and maybe Mr. Combs will actually like right now we're starting to see will actually face some type of consequences. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So a lot of people are saying that they believe it could be Beyonce, Jay-Z, you know, just a host of people on these tapes that are being shopped around. Also, Mary J. Blige was on the red carpet not too long ago, and she was looking extremely uncomfortable. A lot of these celebs are looking very uncomfortable. Um, looks like they have a lot on their mind ever since Diddy Dunn got popped, okay? And Mary right here, please. Right here, to the right. Mary, straight ahead. Mary, right here. Straight ahead. Mary, one more. And Ms. Blige. So now in other news, last but certainly not least, um, I want to go ahead and just, you know, once again, send my thoughts and prayers to everybody being affected by Hurricane Helene. Um, this situation has just kept me up at night just because, again, I have a lot of ties to the Carolinas. Um, I lived there for 10 years. My youngest son was born in North Carolina. So to see places like Asheville, um, and so many places just destroyed. It's heartbreaking. And not just in the Carolinas, but parts of Georgia, Tennessee. This is a natural disaster of epic proportions. And it's very, people are saying that it's even worse than Katrina at this point. This morning, scenes of devastation across the southeast. From Florida to the Carolinas, Helene decimating towns and communities. Its death toll still rising. Asheville, North Carolina, an unfolding catastrophe. Homes and buildings swept away by raging floodwaters that have submerged the town. It's beyond anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. A similar scene in the town of Chimney Rock, virtually wiped off the map by floodwaters. Chimney Rock's gone. Flying Bridge is gone. Meanwhile, the heavy rains triggering a massive mudslide that washed out this stretch of I-40, a major highway connecting western and eastern parts of the state. Helene's flooding rains bringing devastation to Tennessee as well. And Irwin, the scene of this dramatic rescue. Further south in Florida, entire neighborhoods ripped to shreds. Homes decimated, boats thrown into parking lots. We're very fortunate. We're very fortunate that we're alive. Helene is the third hurricane to slam into Florida's Big Bend in just 13 months. Entire houses are missing or flattened in on themselves. This recovery will be measured in years and years, not months. A storm surge of record levels flooded the barrier islands just off of Florida's coast in the Gulf of Mexico. I have a, uh, a wife of uh, 48 years that, uh, that I've left on the island by herself, and uh, she's pretty frustrated and stressed out. Near St. Petersburg, crews are working through mounds of sand several feet tall, searching for whatever and whoever they can find. We have active search and rescue out there going through every single structure, making sure if there's anybody in there that still um, could be rescued. And Willie, this hotel here in downtown is one of the few places in all of Asheville that has Wi-Fi. And people here, as you can see, are gathering morning, noon, and night for a chance at some cell. Um, a lot of my tea sippers that have been in contact with me on Discord, on Instagram, in the YouTube comment section, because we were posting stuff over the weekend, keeping people um, abreast of what was going on in the Southeast. And there's a lot of people stranded right now. They're stuck in their homes. Um, they're running out of water. A lot of people without power. So it's very, very serious. And let's stop with the accusations. Let's stop judging people and saying, well, why didn't they leave? First of all, these are not coastal towns that are affected. A lot of these people are in mountain regions, the Appalachias. They did not get a warning to leave. They were not told to evacuate. Nobody thought this storm would come that far inland. This is a storm that was massive and nobody was prepared for it. They thought it was going to be more or less in Florida around the bend, and it ended up spreading across several states. So like East Tennessee, Pigeon Ford, Dollywood, Gatlinburg, they're very much affected. And you guys know my event is this weekend, so it's just very stressful because I know a lot of people 
you know, are coming to the event from the Southeast. So just, you know, be careful, um, stay prepared. There's more to come. I also want to warn you guys that right now um, the supply chain is once again being affected. Um, supposedly the shippers and the railroad people, um, they're supposed to be going on strike. They're supposed to be going on strike today. Just hours from now, a potential major strike sparking fears that parts of the U.S. economy could come to a standstill. Thousands of dock workers threatening to walk off the job from Boston and New York all the way down to New Orleans and Houston. The International Longshoremen's Association represents 85,000 workers in these critical port cities. A strike could cost up to $4.5 billion per day. These ports carry everything from canned goods to car parts to electronics. And a walkout would force major stores, including Walmart, Home Depot, and Ikea, to find other ways to get their products into the U.S. The workers are at an impasse tonight over a new six-year contract, demanding higher wages and more protections against automation. In recent weeks, the union boss defiant. I'll shut them down throughout the world to prove that we can beat them. The alliance pushing back, blasting what they call the union's repeated refusal to come to the table and bargain. Are you worried this could crush the supply chain ahead of the holiday shopping season? The longer a strike goes, the longer it's going to take to recover, the more of a potential impact it has. President Biden has the power to break a strike, but the White House says he is not considering it. Why not? Because it's collective bargaining. Stop right here. Stop right here, y'all. Do not go into these people's store and buy up all the toilet paper. Y'all, if these union workers go on strike, toilet paper will be at the least of our worries. Let's talk about it, y'all. The strike that's going on with these union workers. Um, they want to raise, y'all. We all deserve a raise with everything going up. These people want to raise. They're set to go on strike October 1st if they can't come to some type of mutual agreement about getting them a raise, y'all. What this means for us, it will impact our gas prices first. Because if we can't get no gas over here, it's going to become high demand. So guess what? They're going to make us pay more for it. It's going to affect our food. It's going to affect um, toiletries, fruit, all this uh, stuff that comes over that border, y'all. It's going to affect all of these things for us so we all need to be praying right now at this current moment that they able to come to some type of mutual agreement because we can't afford for gas to go up any higher we can't afford for food to go up any higher we all are struggling right now in this economy imagine it going up even higher furthermore if it takes them longer to come to an agreement like months go by y'all that means fuel we won't have no more fuel so how are our truck drivers going to come to be able to deliver you know our food and other products to these grocery stores if the truck drivers can't get gas then y'all know we during show sure ain't gonna be able to get no gas so that means we all stuck at the house you know can't move around we can't get no food we can't get nothing so let's just pray against all of that for the united states y'all and that we able to come to some type of mutual agreement so these people don't even go on the strike so we can continue to get our goods at a i ain't gonna say a, a decent price but a price that price that we can actually be able to get something to eat y'all be able to travel to go to work and everything else y'all so prayers you know prayers that everything goes good and we have it to tuesday which is october first for them to um come to some type of agreement Furthermore, let me say this. If I can come on here and bring y'all entertainment talking about Cardi B and P. Diddy and all that, I can also give y'all the real of what's going on in the world, too. So, that's it. Bye, y'all. What's going on, everybody? This is CDL Shorty A. Why isn't nobody talking about the ports, man? October 1st, you know that um, they're going to have a big strike on the ports. So, these right here, I'm down here at the ports. These right here are huge cranes that they use to take containers off of ships like this. Now, this ship right here, it's got cars on it. But guess what? If the ILA and if the Marine Time cannot come to an agreement by September 30th, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna be a huge strike on the ports, all East Coast ports, and there's whispers of West Coast ports being shut down too, guys. So what do you think that's gonna do for the trucking community? All that freight is gonna be backed up in the water and it's gonna be backed up here on the ports because of labor, labor laws. You know, they want what they're deserved. So we as truckers need to stick together and we need we can come together and have a strike too to get what we deserve. Why are brokers out here taking 40% off loads? Why is shippers out here pinning uh, 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 carriers against each other? Huh? We need to do better, guys. 
we need to do better all right so i'm just letting you guys know october the 1st it's going to be a huge strike at the ports i'm down here at the port of jacksonville florida all right so what do you think that's going to do for not only the trucking community but the everyday community think about it i'm honestly getting pretty worried about the upcoming port strike i'm reading on the news they're saying on fox news a port uh, they think already has shut down they're showing the trucks lining up trying to get in to kind of like scavenge you know to get the stuff out that they can get out and it baffles me you know i live in miami in south florida here no one really seems to know anything that's going on here people are oblivious here they're only interested in clubbing and stuff in a few days they'll get it when they go to the grocery store and they realize that you know things are missing off the shelf and things like that but this has a ripple effect it affects everyone it affects the truckers they don't get paid the inflation is out of control already. It's like, but no, no, the, the idiots are voting for Harris because she's a woman and that apparently makes her qualified. It's like, I'm a woman, I should not be president, okay? But you know, can't argue with an idiot. Translation, it's starting to happen. Uh, the Miami port is shut down. See all those trucks, all the drivers have gone home and there's no exit, no entrance to the port of Miami. It has started. They are going on strike, people. They need to pay them their money because they were gonna be short on everything. People are gonna run to the stores and look for toilet paper and I mean, whatever comes from the other countries, which is pretty much everything. So just to let you know, the Miami port has started it. Later on, it'll be LA, it'll be New York. All the ports are supposed to be shutting down, so keep an eye out on the news. Can't believe it. I said it because I had to be said. I always say the truth. Can't believe it. We know that we're in a fight. If, if, if they want to fight, then a war is what they're going to get. I've been a longshoreman for over 23 years. And one thing I do know to be true, gas has went up. The cost of living has constantly went up. And, 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 and throughout these 23 years that I've been on the waterfront, we've only asked for $2, $3, or maybe $5 over the course of the contract. We've done our part. And we're, now we're asking, hey, you do your part. Because during the pandemic, we never stopped working. Imagine that a hospital is looking for a type of blood uh, to be shipped to it. And it's on, on the ship that I'm working on. But it's pouring down raining, lightning. We can't stop working. We got to get that, that box off so that that hospital can continue to drive it and save the people's lives that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with it. And we, we just want to be respected for it. And, and, and I think it's high time that we demand that. And we, we, we're long overdue. Automation is serious yeah. because when you bring new automation in to take away from our jobs, you don't you don't make means for that person to have a job. They're, they're, they're pushed over to the side and they can't do that job that they've been accustomed to doing. What we're asking is allow our people to continue to work in this industry without going to get an extra job to make ends meet. Allow us to take care of our families like we've been doing with, with the wages that we currently have in place. Continue that trend. That's all we're asking for. And if we have to sit out two days, two weeks, two months, we're prepared to do that. So it is getting real, y'all. Like I said, I've been staying on top of all of this stuff. We've been speaking about it on Discord. I'm glad we do have a platform we can talk openly and freely and have these discussions, but it's getting real. Um, you know, definitely stock up on what you can. I don't know if they're going to go through with the strike tomorrow because the hurricane came. I don't know if the hurricane might buy some time. But these longshoremen definitely deserve to get paid, right? Everybody deserves some type of pay raise. Um, but it's also scary because we have hundreds and thousands of people in the Southeast right now that are without power. They're going through it. Uh, water is scarce right now. They're not able to get to stores. 
Um, I know they sent a lot of people from the Midwest, like a lot of electricians, um, to go down there to the Southeast and help bring back power. I know there's quite a few of my male tea sippers down in the Southeast right now working to bring relief and power and stuff like that. This is why I say we need more young men getting into, you know, infrastructure work, plumbing, electrician, carpentry, things like that, because um, everybody can't be an influencer. Everybody can't be a TikToker. When things like this happens, no TikTok dance is going to bring back up the electricity. It's not going to, you know, get the water restored. It's going to have to be people down there who have these trades. And these trades are dying right now. So I just don't even know what to think anymore. It's just so stressful. But I'm just keeping everybody in prayer. And um, stay prayed up. Um, we just hopefully... Something will come of this. Hopefully there'll be some type of reprieve because these people definitely deserve a raise. Um, we don't understand, you know, a lot of people don't understand how much shipping plays an effect on the things that we get. Everything from clothing to food to gas, you know, truckers. That's why I have so much respect for my trucker tea sippers, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, all the truckers out there because they make things, they make moves, you know, and we forget about the longshoremen who take things off of these barges and take things from all these shipping containers and put them on the trucks. So anything affecting the supply chain, um, it's just going to be a cascading effect. So once again, prayers stay by in the Southeast, everyone being affected by Hurricane Helene, um, all the people who are missing, um, people waiting to hear from their loved ones. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. But um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure to put all this information in the video. While it's cool to keep it with the Diddy news and the celebrity tea, y'all know me. I'm always going to put some medicine in the food. So y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.